Would you ever walk away from God? Would you ever walk away from God? That's the question I'm starting this episode off with. I guess if you're a person who doesn't believe in God, I mean, then that question's pretty easy, right? But if you're a Christian or just a believer in God in general, if God was standing in front of your face preaching at you, would you ever think you'd walk away? Hi, folks, and welcome back to Holy Spirit Soapbox. I'm Dan, and today's episode is very bluntly called Walking Away From God. You're probably sitting there like, Dan, you're out of your mind. I love God. I would not walk away from God. If he was standing in my face, I would bow down and just, oh, weep, and I can't believe this is God in front of me, and and you would know that I love God. Okay, well, let's look into the Bible. I hope that's the case, but I want to look into the Bible to to give you an idea of where this question is coming from, okay? So let's look into John chapter 6. Jesus was seen preaching to many. Many meaning like thousands, okay? He fed 5,000 plus women and children, right? He had five loaves of bread and two fishes. People were like, we're hungry. This ain't going to feed all of us, Okay. But then he multiplies it and everybody's fed and people are crying. They're loving on him, right? They're crying. They're shouting. They're celebrating the fact that they were fed until their stomachs were full and they even had leftovers. All seems fine and dandy, right? Let's get down to verses 14 and 15, okay, where it says here. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. And in verse 15, Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Hmm. Jesus realized that the people were more excited about receiving the gift of food that actually spoils versus the words that lead to eternal life. And these words don't spoil. This is the bread. We learned about this in the Lord's Prayer, the daily bread. So he withdrew to the mountain by himself. Now, this seems like Jesus walked away from people, but it's the total opposite, believe it or not. Okay, he knows our hearts. And and as the other disciples went to meet him at the shoreline after he withdrew, he told them he knew they care more about their relationship with him than just the food that was provided. Okay, he told those disciples that went and met him. The other people that didn't follow him after this, they walked away from him. He knew they would walk away from him. They were more focused on that food that they got. They got all this food and they were happy and full and, oh, let's make this guy king so we can get food all the time. The miracle of the bread and the fish was not to sustain these people forever. It was meant to be a sign that Jesus is Messiah. And also to sustain them for that time period while they listened to the most important stuff, the words from heaven. The bread was not a showing of blessings, but just sustenance in that period of time. A few things come to mind from this really impactful chapter, okay? Do we only follow Jesus out of an expectation, knowing that he performs miracles and can give us like, millions or billions of dollars like is that why we follow him better yet how willing are we to follow jesus if we don't receive material things or specific prayers we ask for are we more reluctant to to follow him pick up our cross as he says and follow him day to day if we don't see millions of dollars show up in our bank account somehow or a prayer a specific prayer answered you know I've spoken to a few people recently, and they've they've all mentioned that their prayers have not been answered, okay? At least one time or another. Same here. There's certain things I prayed for specifically, and they weren't answered at the time, you know? And there were so many prayers that they've mentioned that they've, they've asked for, and I won't list them all here, right? But thankfully, they are, and I am, still following Jesus, okay? Regardless of not having those prayers answered. We have to first know that answered prayers for things on earth are not a litmus test or something or de facto way to know that God loves us or is listening. He loves us anyways. And he's always listening. 
but he may give us things that we ask for while we're here on earth because it's actually what is best for us at that time, but he may not as well. He may not give it to us because it might not be good for us. I can ask for millions or billions or trillions of dollars. I can ask for my mortgage to be paid off by somebody, you know, that just wants to pay it off or whatever. But the point of the matter is it may not match up with God's will at this time. It might just be a not yet. I don't know. But we have to continue to follow Jesus regardless if we get these prayers answered immediately and we see a miracle happen in our face. Unfortunately, there are people who don't actually continue to follow God or Jesus because he didn't grant their wishes. They look at him as a genie. They also tend to walk away because they have other, you know, more important things to handle and just go about their day. And we, ha- we saw this happen in John chapter 6 as well. In verses 25 to 70, you know, we hear lots of back and forth. This is still chapter 6, verses 25 through 70. We hear lots of back and forth between so-called disciples and Jesus. Jesus calls himself the bread of life, which means all of the bread on earth does not give us eternal life. We know this. Jesus came from heaven to give spiritual bread, real daily bread, which leads to eternal life in heaven. This bread, capital B bread, it's Jesus, is not like the bread that was given to the 5,000 plus. After Jesus tried to explain this, because they were in Capernaum, they knew him as Joseph's son and as a mason slash carpenter, they started to walk away from him. It's amazing. I mean... This God came to earth and he showed many miracles, including feeding every single one of them and more. But even in the midst of all of these miracles that they've seen, even the healings and all that fun stuff, once he claimed to be the son of God, they started to walk away from him and go about their day. They were full. Why would I listen to you? I'm all full. My stomach's full. I got my food for the day. I got my fill. I am stuffed. I don't, I don't need to listen to you anymore. And these people actually did fear God, by the way. These were people that were waiting. They they patiently waiting for that coming Messiah and still walked away from him. They figured that their stomachs were more important than the actual word of God. It's crazy. Now, I'll go back to my first question at the beginning. Would you ever walk away from God? Really think about this. And maybe you have in some way. Maybe you've decided that something is more important than hearing the word of God and continue to fall into the bread of this world, the actual worldly things. Maybe you weren't hearing what you wanted to hear from sermons one day or many days and decided that you weren't going to follow what they were preaching, even though they were preaching the actual word of God and they were trying to lead you back to Jesus through that narrow gate. I mean, I'll be honest, I've done this myself. I found quote-unquote, more important things to do than to listen to sermons or work on my relationship with God. I've done it. I do it here and there. I try not to, but I do it. Have you? There's this story of Mary and Martha, these two sisters, okay? It's, it's pretty well known, and it's, it's, a really, it's a really highly quoted story about Martha who decided that it was more important to do chores then listen and spend time with Jesus. Jesus was at her house. Like imagine God sitting in your house, like in your living room <laughs> and you're just like, I got to go do the dishes and then like get these things done and get some food ready for you and all this stuff. And I understand that the concept behind it, you want to be nice to your, to your visitors, but she started condemning her sister Mary for not doing chores and helping her because Mary was sitting and listening to Jesus What did Jesus do? He was quick to help realign Martha and was like, listen, your sister chose the right thing to do here. She chose the right thing to do. While you're choosing to do other quote unquote important stuff, Mary is doing the important thing and she is sitting here having a relationship with me, listening to me while we all talk about the kingdom of heaven. Martha, you need to do the same thing. Even more importantly here, the question we really have to ask ourselves is why do we even go to, ser- to sermons or listen to sermons and go to church? Why do we do that? Is it to hear what we want to hear? 
Is it to feel saved? Or do we go to hear what we need to hear so that we can better our relationship with Jesus? If Jesus was challenging our selfishness and wanted to show us the way to true eternal life, would we walk away because it's something we don't want to hear right now or something we don't want to pursue? Do we actually want to learn about Christ or just find short-term answers to our problems? Those folks that we heard about, that we just talked about in John, that did walk away, you know, honestly, they probably didn't love or want to pursue God in the first place. Really, they were just looking for the gifts that God gave to them. That could be the case. I'm not going to judge them. I don't know. But if you can walk away from Jesus after he says, I'm the son of God that can provide bread, eternal bread, and not just give you bread and fish to fill your stomachs every day, which he can do. But the more important thing is to listen to the word of God from heaven. And they walked away from that. That just tells me that they were a little more focused on, on the, the worldly stuff. I don't know. Maybe that's the case. I could be wrong. But that's what it seems like to me. I mean, we often like to look at those Pharisees and Sadducees, right? And we maybe say things like, we're not like them. We're not stuck in tradition. And they were just going after Jesus all the time. Well, at least we're not like them. I feel compassion and empathy for Jesus in that time. I don't know. But we sometimes fail to look at those so-called disciples who looked at Jesus face-to-face, saw the miracles, and could even have a relationship with him, and still decided to walk away from him. This is something to really think about. It really is. Now, on top of John chapter 6, since we went over it pretty much, here are a couple other verses to meditate on, okay? Here are your four verses. Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And John chapter 6, verse 50. Now, finally, some questions. Three questions. I want you to keep in mind, too, that people that get up and preach or teach, you know, these the, the reason for this whole episode, these episodes that we pass along to you weekly, you know, everybody that gets up on their little podium or soapbox, right? The reason why we do this is to, A, preach to ourselves because there's a lot that we fa- we fall short as well, right? We that like to teach and like to preach. Now, the other side of it is to get everybody to know Jesus and God much better. That's the goal. We want people to know who God is. And it may challenge our selfishness a little bit. It may get us a little bit uncomfortable. But that's the point, right? Because we have to recognize where our selfishness is so that we can recognize where we fall short so we can recognize where these barriers are that are put up in front of us and God so that we can knock those barriers down and then get much closer to God. So here are your three questions. Question one, has there ever been a time where you have walked away from God even after giving your life to Christ? That answer is probably yes. Maybe not. Maybe my answer is yes to that. And it is a simple yes or no question, but it's going to make you think, right? Has there actually ever been a time? Can you be honest with yourself and ever think of a time where you walked away from God even after you gave your life to Christ? You got rebaptized or baptized and you're like, I'm committing to Christ going forward. But there might have been a time you walked away. Question two, what kinds of things take priority over your relationship with God? And then question three, if your answer is no to both of the above, right? If, if you have, there has never been a time and, that you've walked away from God and there's nothing else that takes priority over your relationship with God, how can you help others find and help build their relationship with Christ so that they can witness the true bread of life? Thank you again for joining in today. You're all such a blessing to us. And we ask that you please tell at least one person about Jesus today. And also about Holy Spirit Soapbox, because we want to join you in spreading the gospel of our Lord and Savior across every 
every place on earth, every country, every corner, every single square mile of earth, we want to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we feel the Holy Spirit has a ton more to say because the goal of this podcast, as you may know, is to give us a deeper intimacy with God. And I know we say this all the time, but there are people like we talked about today who aren't hearing what they want to hear or don't care to hear what they need to hear, so end up walking away from God. They see God as like a genie or something, and and the Holy Spirit loves to lightly convict all of us and make us all think whenever we feel other things are more important than our relationship with God. So I would love to pray over all of you. If you could take your prayer posture, please do. If you can't, no worries. I'm going to pray over you right now. So let's talk to our Father in Heaven. Our Father, we know that you allow us to walk away when we decide to. We know this. We know that sometimes we only want to hear what we want to hear or find other things more important than you. We know that, and I know you know that, but we do know that doing these things do not benefit our relationship with you and that you truly want to have a firm and deep relationship with us. Father, we pray for us to really hear the words that you're giving to us and that you've given to us through your your word in the Bible so that we can truly feel and understand true joy, true hope, true peace, and true love. We continue to ask for the daily bread of heaven and to help us pick up our cross and follow you always. We ask all of these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. 